You think Donald Trump's a loser? What well, would a loser brag about winning a golf tournament at his own course? I, I don't think so. Jon Stewart destroyed Trump with his brilliant satire and gave him a treatment he will never forget by laughing at his silly celebrations on his brand new social media site, Truth Social. The former president celebrates his successes at his own golf courses, and Stewart was forced to call out the nonsense. Let's get to the big news today. Breathless anticipation at Trump Tower over an important and perhaps earth-shaking development in the world of former President Donald J. Trump. Celebrations are underway for former President Trump after claiming he won two golf trophies at his West Palm Beach Club. Yes, you heard that right. Trump is celebrating, but not because he won his ongoing trials or not because he won the elections, but because he won two gold trophies on his own golf course. I mean, how funny can that guy get? That's right, woke libs. <laughs> you think Donald Trump's a loser? What well, would a loser? brag about winning a golf tournament at his own course? I, I don't think so. Although obviously Trump has an advantage playing golf, it's difficult for his opponents to stay focused when they spend all that time staring at that ass. Come on. In an amusing segment on The Daily Show, host Jon Stewart focuses his comedic gaze on former President Donald J. Trump's declaration of winning golf trophies at his West Palm Beach Club. Stewart mocks the belief that Trump is a loser, joking about the natural edge that Trump may have in a tournament staged on his own golf course. The sarcasm extends to a playful joke on Trump's physical appearance appearance, indicating that it could distract his golf opponents. The audience's reaction to Stewart's humor, which included laughing and applause, emphasized the segment's effectiveness on conveying the message with satire. Stewart adds to the humor by pointing to Trump's previous heated comments and using golf as a metaphor to draw a link between Trump's celebrity status and its so-called reward. I mean, I, I don't remember that. Okay. It is, as good as my memory is, I don't that, but I have I so you don't remember saying you have one of the best friends? I, I don't remember. That's the high-functioning candidate <laughs> from nine years ago, unable to recall if he has a good memory. Trump responded to Stewart's satirical attack on his favorite platform. His reaction sought to deny Stewart's narrative, praising his golfing accomplishments while responding to the comic attacks with his signature mix of ignorance and counter-criticism. I don't remember ever buying something for myself. Do you recall what years you were married to Ms. Naples? John Stewart evaluated memory of Donald Trump by addressing a series of odd public comments and behaviors, focusing on clear memory lapses during legal statements and some of Trump's more unconventional statements about technology and the environment. He demonstrated this by showing a clip of Donald Trump, his son, Donald Trump Jr., and his daughter, Ivanka Trump, all unable to recall basic facts while taking oath. This selection aims not only to highlight times of forgetfulness, but also to call into doubt the legitimacy and dependability of their public comments. Furthermore, Stewart did not miss the chance to respond to Trump's strange claims about magnets and their interaction with water. Trump's claim that magnets are somehow destroyed when immersed became the focus of his comedic examination, highlighting the strangeness of such a statement. Stewart also mocked Trump's statements about windmills allegedly harming whale population. He used these quotes to highlight the sometimes strange nature of Trump's claims on technology and environmental issues. That's right, all week we sat with breathless anticipation to see if Trump had $454 million in his wallet? Or would Trump Tower be turned over to New York City to perhaps ease our terrible housing crunch? Or more likely, do what they always do, another shitty Walgreens. I think... Stewart didn't shy away from tackling Trump's business tactics either, who faces a huge financial responsibility as a result of a New York civil fraud prosecution. The verdict against Trump requires him to get a bond of nearly half a billion dollars to prevent the state from seizing properties to repay the debt. This development has aroused significant discussion and commentary about the potential consequences for Trump's financial and real estate business. Stewart also did not hesitate to examine the consequences of Trump's financial situation, jokingly speculating whether Trump Tower may be transformed into public housing to help New York City's housing problem or, more cynically, 
become yet another shop space. This lighthearted hypothesis expands to a broader critique of urban development practices, blaming former New York local mayor David Dinkins for unrelated local problems. As the media focuses on Trump's race against time to raise the necessary amount, there is a palpable sense of anticipation about the potential ramifications for his commercial operation. There's a possibility that this financial setback might mark a big turning point for Trump's economic ventures, with analysts predicting that the situation could lead to a symbolic obituary for the Trump Organization. This evolving story highlights the complex interplay between legal issues, public perception, and the future of one of the most scrutinized individuals in American politics and business. The situation creates a unique opportunity for Trump, known for his numerous legal plots and financial intrigue, to be cornered by the very real potential of significant asset forfeiture, drawing the attention of both supporters and opponents alike. As more details surface, all eyes are on how this chapter in Trump's illustrious career will proceed. The situation is so interesting that The Daily Show hosts are taking turns making fun of Trump. Take a look on what Klepper had to say. How dare you? Have you no decency thing? Because he doesn't. <laughs> We've seen this. You can't take the high road with Donald Trump. That off-ramp has been closed since 2016. <laughs> In a piece titled Twitter Wars, Jon Stewart begins with a comic study of Donald Trump's well-documented activity on Twitter, where Trump has been known to participate in numerous debates and offer his liberated ideas, often late at night. Stewart, with his great sense of sarcasm, draws comparisons between Trump's Twitter activity and the competitive, often dramatic nature of reality television, a genre Trump is intimately familiar with, having appeared on The Apprentice. Stewart imagines the Tweet Rentis as a reality show in which, instead of boardroom eliminations, Trump uses his Twitter account to fire or publicly criticize politicians, celebrities, and other public figures, effectively transforming the social media platform into a setting for high-stakes drama. This satirical approach not only shows Trump's unprecedented use of Twitter as a medium for direct communication and public spectacle, but it also emphasizes the merging of entertainment and politics in the digital era. Stewart's extensive dissection may include comments on the consequences of governance and political discourse in the age of social media, where a single tweet can have huge political ramifications, affect public opinion, or even affect foreign relations. Through the tweet rentis, Stewart was able to throw light on the bizarre aspect of witnessing real-time political and personal battles waged via tweets reflecting on how this medium of communication has reshaped the public's engagement with politicians. Jon Stewart, known for his incisive wit and keen analytical approach, took a closer look at Kevin O'Leary's defense of Trump's actions. He dissected O'Leary's statements, examining their nuances and implications. Stewart's goal was to unravel the complexities surrounding Trump's legal troubles and the broader ethical questions they raise. Stewart highlighted the enormity of the legal censure against Trump, the $355 million judgment, coupled with the ban on conducting business in New York, had far-reaching consequences. By scrutinizing O'Leary's arguments, Stewart aimed to reveal the intricate web of business practices, accountability, and the fine line between aggressive strategies and outright fraud. Stewart deftly pointed out that O'Leary's position wasn't just about Trump. It extended to the corporate community at large. He questioned whether the business world had inadvertently encouraged the actions that led to such a significant legal verdict. Was there complicity in turning a blind eye to questionable practices? Through his characteristic wit, Stewart emphasized the moral quandaries faced by public figures like O'Leary. Defending actions that resulted in a massive legal judgment required soul-searching. Stewart's examination underscored the broader debate about business ethics, transparency, and the responsibility of influential individuals in shaping economic activities. I think your valuation is stinky poo-poo. <laughs> No, you didn't. <laughs> Canadians are so vulgar. As the evening's meeting of comedy and authenticity comes to an end, it serves as a reminder of how closely the domains of politics and entertainment are becoming connected, and how satirists like Stewart play a crucial role in influencing contemporary conversation rather than just being observers. Let's remember when we leave tonight, that humor provides us with more than just a brief burst of laughter. It is a means of gaining a deeper comprehension of the world, a spark for dialogue, and a connection that keeps us together as we navigate the complex area of social issues and conflicts. Thanks for watching.
Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to stay updated about Trump's difficult journey for the office.